Stay tuned for the world's most relevant newscast, broadcasting from your very own Vermont, British Columbia. I present to you a program that is both mind-blowing and culturally rich. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a Vermont Live. Good evening. Tonight I have a very special show for you in the store. I'll be reviewing Valmount's Live's greatest skits ever. So sit back with a glass of Chardonnay and relax into your sofa and enjoy the 79th episode of Valmount Live. Come in. Ah, good morning, Headmaster. Ah, oh, Mrs. Perkins, good of you to come. I realize you're a busy woman, but I didn't feel we could discuss this matter over the electric telephone. No, absolutely not, Headmaster. I mean, if Tommy's in any sort of trouble, I'd like to nip it in the bud. Quite frankly, Tommy is in trouble, Mrs. Perkins. Recently, his behavior has left a great deal to be desired. Oh, dear me. Yes. He takes no interest in school life whatsoever, he refuses to muck in on the sports field, and it's been weeks since any master has had any written work from him. Dear all. me. Yes, if he wasn't dead, I'd have him expelled. I beg your pardon? Yes, expelled. If I wasn't making allowances for the fact that your son was dead, he'd be out on his ear. Tommy's dead? Yes. He's upstairs in sick bay now, stiff as a board and bright green. And this is, I fear, typical of his current attitude. And I have pleaded with him, and so has Matron, and he will make no effort. Tommy's dead? Yes, and that's what's so galling. He seems to have no sense of moderation. One moment he's flitting about like a paper kite, the next he's completely immovable and starting to smell. Well, how did he die? Well, is that important? Yes, I think so. Well, it has a good deal to do with the library. We've been having some trouble recently with boys slipping into the library and taking books without their library card. Your son was caught, and I administered a fatal beating during which he died. But you'll be glad to know the ringleader has been caught, and I don't think we'll have to worry about library discipline anymore. Now, the library card system I'm was sorry. <laughs> you beat my son to death? Yes, yes, so it would seem. Please, I'm not used to being interrupted. Now, the library card system was introduced... Exactly what happened? Well, it seems the boys were slipping in. And taking the books. No, during the beating. Oh, that. Yes, well, one moment he was bending over, the next he was lying down. Dead? Deadish. Really, Mrs. Perkins, I find your morbid fascination with your son's death quite disturbing. What we are discussing here is your son's attitude, and quite frankly, I'm starting to see where he gets it from. At least I never beat him to death. No, and that was quite obvious to me from the day he got here. And I wondered then, and I can't help but wonder now, Mrs. Perkins, if he wouldn't be a very different sort of lad if you had administered a few fatal beatings earlier on. Are you completely mad? Yes, I'm absolutely furious. To accommodate the funeral, I have had to cancel afternoon school on Wednesday. I'm sorry. I've got to be going. This is preposterous. Yes, it is. If it were true. What? I've been joking, Mrs. Perkins. Forgive me. It's my strange Hibernian sense of humor. I've been having you on. Oh, thank God for that. I wouldn't cancel afternoon school to bury that little twerp. That performance was by Anne Marie Scott and Jody Newham, was written by Bell Elton and Richard Curtis. It airs at the end of episode eight. One of our faithful viewers reviewed that piece for us. And I have it right here. Brilliant performance by the quirky, deeply discomforting, dark humored ladies. Jody and Anne in performances this week and last, yes. It leaves one feeling utterly squeamish. Fair portrayal of the Frankenstein in all. Coupled with the lingering medical and subhuman conditions in our world like fractured bifida, displayed wishbone and bureaucratic phrase up. Contemporary, Victorian, there's something for everyone. Most excellent. Next, 
we have a mockumentary starring Dr. Nick Riviera, played by Mike Austin, and performances by both Anne Marie and Jody, with a voiceover by Andrew McCracken. Every day he stares into the face of ugliness and despair, and every day he transforms another life. Plastic surgeons work with some of the most tragic cases, bringing light and hope to families. In order for us to do the small adjustment to your eyebrows, we must remove your whole face. I'll be paying in cash. Ah. In that case, my dear, it's no problem. Sign here. Most doctors treat their patients for illnesses. Often they reoccur, but Dr. Nick transforms his patients for good, one face at a time. Each year, Dr. Nick takes time out of his practice to spend two weeks in Bolivia, transforming the lives of children. Many Bolivian children suffer from malnutrition, which makes them especially prone to a condition causing ugliness. This little girl suffers badly. Sometimes, the corners of her mouth turn upwards into a ghastly smile. These children are doomed to suffer through their poverty in unimaginable ugliness. But thanks to Dr. Nick, they can suffer through their poverty with beautiful faces. Well, as a heart surgeon, I wish my work were as life-changing as Dr. Nick's. But what could be more important than saving people's lives? Well, sometimes saving a life just prolongs the suffering and the ugliness. I can fix a failed heart, but the ugliness still remains. Dr. Nick goes right to the root causes. Most of his patients die within days of the procedure. But Dr. Nick claims those people would die anyways. At least they're dying happy. We feel they should die ugly. The Ugly People's Coalition is outraged, and we're filing a class action lawsuit on behalf of ugly people everywhere. You catch her, doctor? Please. Other force-ups? Yes, doctor. The pliers, please. Yes. <laughs> oh, very good, yes. Yes. Maybe the Canadian doctors could learn a few things from Dr. Nick Riviera. October came around, and riders from the Wild Rose Kingdom were being fined for petty offenses, and they threatened to take their business to the Kingdom of Muktuk. Will the Mayor of Valshire intervene? Or will blind justice win the day? Here's a gritty drama pitting the knights of snow and mud against the intellectuals of Valshire. Is it foul boredom that leadeth those gods of the law to pick upon us merry sledders? My own dignity was harassed this Saturday past for no reason whatsoever. It would seem some petty officer found offense in my stylish rig. That harbinger of fines and bad omens tickets three he gave me. Three! Mine is to enforce the laws of the land. In truth, justice is a difficult bride, but to her I am wed. The first was for the routing of my break lock cable. Second was for uncovered lights. It was daylight, and my lights weren't even on. Citizens of Valeshire, it doth come to my attention that in this time of financial hardship, our small but well-tempered population did hear the woes of certain visitors. The third ticket, my statue of Saint Bombardier. Yeah, apparently it hung too loosely from the mirror. The law is clearly stated in the Magna Carta Subsection Motor Vehicle Act. I am outraged that our local establishment could not allow for the minor indiscretions 
of such important guests. Tis not a trivial burden on mine breast to see my neighbour shipped to the poorhouse, but the law of the land must not be transgressed. Transgressors, rich and poor alike, must be punished severely. Two hundred crowns, eight and forty shekels, he fined me. What with the financial grace we lords of snow and mud bring upon Valeshar, our crowns and shekels hardened in the bowels of the kingdom of the wild roses, one would surmise they would let us alone of these trifles, but alas! Why should these rogues absent themselves from the law? These knights of snow and mud seek shelter from our safety regulations, but I ask you, what's next? Immunity from sidewalk spitting? Drinking in the bathroom of the high school? Tis a slippery slope to open theater and murder. Nothing shall compel me to, to ride in Valeshar anymore, and none. I shall take my purse and my purse strings to the kingdom of Maktat. Or perhaps I'll journey to Goldenham or Revelshire. Perhaps those helmets have more modern views on the rights and privileges of noble riders. How they cry when their steeds and sledges are stolen. Ask them, is it law or lawlessness they want? No, no, there can be no leniency. Every law must be obeyed. If the fine fits, wear it. Those noble lords who seek lawlessness, go elsewhere. We will earn our bread the honest way, through fines and tickets. It is a true thing that I did consume some distempering drafts the eve afore. But was many hours since my last cup of mead. Townsfolk, I ask you this. Is a wild rose not a rose by any other name? And if you pricketh us, will we not leave? I demand an apology to restore my dignity. This knave in question, his wagon was wobbly and his lamps too bright. What if some babe were blinded or struck down by an axle come loose? Townsfolk would call for my head. I will not withhold the enforcement of our laws. In this land, safety is king. As such, I declare this day, Snowmobile Day, in honor of the goodwill of our most distinguished and valued guests who have traveled many leagues to grace us with their offerings. Sledders, we will restore you to your prestige. In March 2011, the crew at VCTV was growing tired of the lethargic SAS fee development. They took matters into their own hands and showed the concerns by making a short film. We're almost there, honey. You excited? Yeah. Yeah, me too. You gotta take a left up here. Oh, there it is! There it is! Oh, my Lord. Oh, Earl. I just can't believe it. This, this is, is Sass Bay! To the burned out house now. Let's save that for tomorrow. Well, I hope you all had a pleasant evening. Be sure to tune in next time for more of your regular classic VCTV episodes. I'm out. Yeah, please, can
to heaven I should fly And the great big God who lives up there Should look me in the eye And ask me to remember What on earth I might have seen I'll say that I was loved by you, Catherine I'll say that I was loved by my Catherine Can you sing by yourself now? Catherine I think you're a wonderful woman, and I'd like you to be a part of my life. Now, I realize you're in a relationship right now, but that can change. You know, I play a guitar. It's got six strings. It's quite, quite large and musical. And, uh, what? Five, six, six, one, I'm five, four, one. I'm not this song anymore. I think that spoiled the whole thing now. That was, that was a very romantic song. If you're giving my wife your telephone indeed, number. It was indeed a very wonderful Look at you smiling and smirking. You think you're so funny, don't you?